Though we of the First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve Apostles cannot change the laws of God, we do have the charge to build up the Church and regulate all the affairs of the same in all nations. Thus, we can adjust policy when the Lord directs us to do so. You have recently seen such examples. Perhaps I can illustrate this through policy adjustments regarding those who identify themselves as lesbian, gay, bisexual, or transgender, LGBT, and their children. I realize that other initials could be added to this acronym, but LGBT should suffice for the purpose of my message. Consider the policy announced in November 2015 related to the advisability of baptism for children of LGBT parents. Our concern then, and one which we discussed at length and prayed about fervently over a long period of time, was to find a way to reduce friction between gay or lesbian parents and their children. Because parents are the primary exemplars for their children, we did not want to put young children in the position of having to choose between beliefs and behavior that they learned at home and what they were taught at church. We wanted to facilitate harmony in the home and avoid pitting children and parents against each other. Thus, in 2015, the policy was made to assist children and their parents in this circumstance, namely that children being raised by LGBT parents would not automatically be eligible for baptism at age eight. Exceptions to this policy would require First Presidency approval. The First Presidency and Quorum of the Twelve have com continued to seek the Lord's guidance and to plead with Him in behalf of His children who were affected by the 2015 policy. We knew that this policy created concern and confusion for some and heartache for others. That grieved us. Whenever the sons and daughters of God weep, for whatever reason, we weep. So our supplications to the Lord continued. We also took note of LGBT parents who sought permission from the First Presidency for their children to be baptized. In nearly every case where the LGBT parents agreed to teach their children about and be supportive of the covenant of baptism, the requested exception was granted. As a result of our continued supplication, we recently felt directed to adjust the policy such that the baptism of children of LGBT parents may be authorized by bishops without First Presidency approval if the custodial parents requested the baptism and understand that a child will be taught about sacred covenants to be made at baptism. We also determined that LGBT parents may request that a baby be named and blessed by one who worthily holds the Melchizedek priesthood. It is important that these parents understand that ward members will contact them periodically and that when a child who has been blessed reaches eight years of age, local leaders will recommend that the child be baptized. Finally, we also clarified that homosexual immorality would be treated in the eyes of the Church in the same manner as heterosexual immorality. Though it may not have looked this way to some, the 2015 and 2019 policy adjustments on this matter were both motivated by love, the love of our Heavenly Father for His children and the love of the brethren for those whom we serve. Because we feel the depth of God's love for His children, we care deeply about every child of God, regardless of age, personal circumstances, gender, sexual orientation, or other unique challenges. 